Hello, my friends. Happy 2024. It is winter, my favorite season of the year, and uh, I'm here in one of my favorite cities in the entire world in Paris, France, uh, in a beautiful little apartment very near the Bastille. We are rehearsing busily for Giulio Cesare, and I am singing the role of Cleopatra, and the performances are at the Palais Garnier, and we open on January the 20th. We have 12 performances coming up. I haven't sung Cleopatra in over 10 years. I believe it's actually been a dozen years uh, since I've sung Cleopatra and I've used the arias, a few of the arias on and off in recitals, but not too, too frequently. Um, but I have to say it's maybe my favorite Handel and one of the most gorgeous roles I've ever had the opportunity to sing. So I'm so excited to get to bring all these performances very soon to the Paris audience. I hope that uh, if you have an opportunity to come that you will see one. They are all so beautiful. They run all the way through about the middle of February. After which, uh, I am making a role debut that I'm really excited because I've been working very hard on this one. It is a Rossini role. It will be my third Rossini fourth Rossini role, um, and it would be the role of Matilda in Guillaume Tell. Um, this would be my first French Rossini part. Uh, I have sung Rosina and Barbiere, I have sung Fiorilla in Turco in Italia, and I have sung the role of Adina, the one-act opera by Rossini at the Pesaro uh, Rossini Opera Festival. But this is going to be a role debut for me, the role of Matilda in Guillaume Tell, and it is a short role by all counts if you think about it compared to the other parts in the opera it's a very long opera it's a five act you know grand opera francais and it's long but my part is actually not that long my uh, my part is actually quite short so i'm excited about that because uh i've had even though it's short it's very 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 difficult it's very demanding the lines are very long the legato goes on and on forever and the coloratura is insane i have been working on it diligently for months <laughs> and i'm just now getting to the point that i can kind of sing it and like be in an upright position by the end so um it, it's something that i'm really looking forward to debuting that is in vienna very soon we start rehearsals for that um middle of february and the performances begin in the beginning of march i believe the 8th is my debut of March, and there are four performances of that at the um, Wiener Staatsoper, so I hope you can come and see that. Uh, that is something that I'm very much looking forward to once again, because I did record Mathilde's first aria, Son Préforé, for my French Bacanto album, and that was very, very well received. Of course, I'm grateful to everyone who continues to uh, buy the French Bacanto albums. We are selling them like hotcakes. They are incredibly popular. I'm so grateful that um, they have been, that it has been so well received, because it was a very, very very, very uh, important project for me to record Bill Canto in the French language, which is something that is near and dear to my heart. And those of you who know that I love to sing in French and know that I love Bill Canto know that this album was a complete dream for me. So speaking of albums, um, the beginning of the month of December, we actually recorded um, my second full opera recording, which will be coming out uh, within the year of 2024. And that is of Bellini's E Puritani. Now, the role of Elvira is one that I have dreamed of singing. I still have not sung it in a staged production. I have sung it in concert only. But I look forward in the very near future to sing more of, uh, of this stunning opera. And our album is incredible. I'm so excited. We recorded it in Dresden. The fabulous Dresdner Philharmonie. The conductor was Ricardo Fritza, who is a complete dream to work with. The tenor role was sung by Larry Brownlee, who is, of course, brilliant, and I've sung with him a good bit this year, and I'm very blessed. Uh, and the baritone was sung by Clark Evans, who I think is a phenomenal young American baritone. The bass was sung by my dear friend and also phenomenal singer Ricardo Zanellato. So this uh, recording, I think, will be so, so, so important for anyone who loves Bellini, who loves Ipuritani, to have on their shelf because it is a piece that we all love dearly and that I will continue to sing throughout my career. At least I hope. <laughs> and um, let's see. So that was the beginning of December that we made those recordings. I actually got sick towards the end of it. After we had recorded everything and we were supposed to sing a concert, I started to come down with a chest cough and I had to pull out and I didn't sing the concert which I was meant to sing and I'm sorry for that but the recording was made so we are very much looking forward to the release of that this year of course you all know I also made a sarsuela recording this past summer uh, in Madrid we recorded um, a group of sarsuela arias by Cuban composers and also by Spanish composers more about that as I have more information about the release and everything but that is something I'm also really looking forward to dropping very soon so 
we've got Cesare, we've got Matilde. The next big exciting thing that I can announce that I would like to go ahead and start talking about is La Sonambula. Now, again, another Bellini part that I have dreamed of singing. I have sung, oh, maybe 20 auditions for La Sonambula when I was a young artist, at least that I can count, um, that I can remember. You know, um, this is a role that doesn't get done very often. The, the opera in general doesn't get done very often, certainly not outside of Europe. And um, I have just not had the opportunity to sing Amina. I have died, been dying to sing it. And now the time has finally come. And this April, I will be debuting this beautiful, beautiful role by Bellini at the Teatro dell'Opera di Roma. And I couldn't be more honored. I couldn't be more grateful. It is an opera that I am dying to sing and that I hope that everyone will enjoy my interpretation of it. Um, I feel already super prepared because it's a role that I studied when I was a young artist. So I am just so happy about bringing it together um, for audiences in Rome. And I will share more information also about that as the time comes. That's not till April, but I wanted to talk about it already because I'm excited. So with all that said, I hope you all had a beautiful holiday season, a beautiful new year. Uh, I wish you all the best for 2024. I hope that you can look forward with peace and joy and that all of your dreams may come true. And uh, follow me as we continue to share more about upcoming roles. There are there's a lot of exciting things happening in 2024 for me. I'm very grateful, of course, as always. And thank you as always for following me. I appreciate always your support, your messages. And with gratitude, I sign off. Have a wonderful new year, my friends. <laughs>
I take the story very seriously. I know there's a lot of guffaw go going on, but there are a lot of quite serious things at stake for her family, for, for, for the, the aunt character, uh, also for Tonio, and even for Sue Peace, because their relationship is all she's ever known, and it's quite sad what's happening to her. So these sad arias that seem to come out of nowhere are, I think, the most touching. And I'm very Thank you so, so, so much for selecting our wonderful album, French Bel Canto, uh, for the winner in the solo recital category this year at the International Opera Awards. I am so, so, so grateful. Uh, this work of art was a project that I have been dreaming of making for a long time. I love singing in French and I love Italian bel canto and this was the project I had my heart set on. And so I'm so grateful to everyone at San Francisco Classical Recording Company. I'm grateful to Maestro Corrado Rovaris who helped lead this album. And I'm grateful to Francesco Ito who wrote the incredible liner notes of this album in particular, but also to the Dresdner Philharmonie and to everyone who helped make this album possible. Thank you all so very much for voting for this wonderful disc. And I'm so, 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 so grateful. Thank you. definitely had a very um, rich musical home. Uh, we had not only classical music, my mom also played the piano uh, and I played the flute. I grew up playing flute for many years and I studied and of course listened to a lot of classical music, but also my family is from Cuba. And so we had a ton of Latin music at home that we would dance to and we would sing along with and harmonize because we all could sing. And uh, you know, I think having a, a Latin background means that music is part of your everyday life just naturally. <laughs> Composer is. I don't know who the composer is. When they're in the cadenza 
and everybody else has the rest of the panamaca over it, you take as much time as you damn well please and take more. And take more. <laughs> and take more. <laughs> Good evening, we're here at the Mahalia Jackson Theater in New Orleans, Louisiana, rehearsing for Friday's concert with the New Orleans Opera. <laughs> Oh, my God. 